I'm going to welcome everybody to our February 26 uh, program. And I must tell you, I uh, had heard about Valley Assistance and I didn't know much about them. So I decided to go and talk with them a couple of days ago, went over and they are located uh, near the what's uh, Springs uh, Green Valley Recreation. Mm -hmm. Right, Enjoy. almost next door, just uh, just past there, and a large uh, building. You guys can explain a little bit more about that. So I went in, and I just wanted to see what they do, and I was very impressed and inspired when I left. And I talked to the two people that you're going to be hearing from today, Chris Erickson and Wes Moulton. And they have been working there for uh, a while. Uh, Chris is from originally from Minnesota, right, Chris? Yes. And Wes is from Texas. Been here a couple of years. We won't hold it against him. <laughs> and uh, so they, I asked them the kinds of things that they did for the community. And I was just astounded. So I'm basically, I'm just going to have them explain now what what they're uh, what they do, some of the many things that they do. And then if you have any chat questions, please type them in. And at the end, after they're finished, we will have questions for them and you can raise your hand and you know how to do that by going to the reactions at the bottom of your screen. Raising your hand will call on you. And there will be there should be questions. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and have uh, Chris and uh, Wes go ahead and tell us what about your organization, please. Okay, um, we'll, we'll kind of probably go back and forth. We normally do presentations kind of back and forth. So I'll, I'll start it off um, a little bit about Valley Assistance Services. Um, it used to be called Green Valley Assistance Services. It has been in the area since the 60s um, and incorporated since 1981. Um, it, it was uh, when I came on board in 2010, uh, it was a lot of social services. Um, and then we added community health. So if you think of Valley Assistance Services, it's a combination of community health and social services. Um, we serve people of all ages from Sarita, Green Valley, um, Amato, Tubac, to McCockery, Carmen, Aravaca. So it's 1,200 square miles that we um, uh, have a service area of. Um, and we might be looking to do a little bit more in the future uh, with that. But we right now we assist um, over 6,400 individuals annually. Um, with only less than 10 staff. So we, we really um, try to look at things when someone comes in with a difficult situation. We look, with, we look at uh, that holistically and Wes will get into that too. Um, so if somebody comes in for one particular problem, what is making that problem? What, how can we help that individual or household and um, not only help with that problem, but change it to be a better situation or life or health in general. So that's what we kind of um, kind of look at. We have a team approach on everything we do. Um, and we have um, qualified staff, we have nurses in each program. Um, and one thing I know Wes will talk, be talking about is volunteers. We have volunteers in all of our programs. Um, I'm going to start it off with our financial um, assistance service uh, program, and then I'll have Wes talk about uh, uh, SNAP and benefits. But our monetary assistance program has been in existence for over 30 years. Um, it's an emergency financial assistance that includes rent or mortgage and utilities. Um, that alone um, has gone over uh, a thousand percent increase since the COVID uh, pandemic has hit. Um, it is very, very uh, a busy program. We see quite many in that um, 
with issues. Just for instance, one person came in just this last week with $3,000 of utility bills that are past due. So it, it really is um, uh, can be life changing if we can get them back on track. Um, and with that program, we do financial education. It's about six hours. There's many different parts to the financial education. It could be budgeting, credit report, saving, um, those types of things. And included with that is another uh, piece that we have is workforce training. So what I mean by workforce training is uh, resume writing, um, coaching them through that, coaching them through with um, um, trying to help them apply for jobs, looking for jobs with them, um, getting them ready to interview with a job, uh, making sure they have um, um, maybe um, proper attire, uh, kind of know what's going on um, with, their, with their skills to kind of uh, get that forthright to a new um, employer that might be looking. So um, we have designated, designated staff, uh, volunteers, and coaches in this particular program. It is probably one of our largest programs um, where it's really a, a significant, we write grants all the time. And I must say, um, when we talk about programs, all of our programs are free, ex except one. And I'll get into that later. So um, I'm going to let Wes take over uh, with, with the SNAP and benefits. So and I'm sorry if I gave anyone vertigo moving. I had to get closer to a plug. My battery was going down. So the benefits advocacy, like Chris said, we look at every client that comes in as a unique situation uh, and try to plug them into as many different of the volunteer um, of the programs that you're going to hear about as possible that can help them. One that often goes hand in hand with that financial assistance is what we call benefits advocacy. So there are a lot of state, county, federal benefits that people can, can take advantage of when they are in situations where they need some help. Um, but people either don't know about them, don't think that they would apply or have no idea about how to begin to apply, or a lot of people that we see have begun trying to, to apply, but it gets a little difficult as you move through the process. There's a lot of uploading of documents, for instance, to do, or there are questions about I don't fit in this situation that's on the computer screen. What do I do? So uh, VAS actually, we have assisters who are trained by a state organization to do this, to help people apply for these benefits. SNAP, which uh, used to be known as food stamps, um, Medicare premium savings programs, which is a big one in the Green Valley area. Um, access, which is commonly known as Medicaid, uh, are, are three big ones. But then there's also WIC. We help people with their unemployment benefits. So one of the things that we do at VAST that, that is really beneficial with clients is uh, with these benefits, we go with them from the very first, the phone call, until they have the benefit, because often it's a lot of letters back and forth. And it's a very goodwill effort on the part of, of DES, Department of Economic Security, uh, Access, all these different companies, they all do their best to get benefits to people. But everybody's situation is so unique that it's often just a barrage of communication coming at somebody. And they're already at a difficult moment where they're having to deal with a lot in their life and sometimes it's too much. So that's one of the things that we can do for people is, is they can bring these letters to us. We don't just do their application with them. It's from the moment they call until they have the benefit or until they have some other benefit or resource. Sometimes people don't qualify for the benefit that they are applying for but we can link them with another resource of benefits. So, um, and really importantly too, and Chris will talk about this some with our other programs is the follow-up. When we give financial assistance to somebody, that's very necessary to keep them in their home and to keep utilities on. 
Uh, but that can be a snapshot picture into someone's life, helping them in that moment of need. If someone's linked with an ongoing benefit, that is taking that help that we gave them and adding something on top that's going to move forward with them for the long term. So it's really important that we link people with as many benefits as we can out there. Chris. There I am. Um, so let me uh, uh, go into uh, one of the programs, um, and then I'll turn it back over to Wes for another one. But uh, there's one particular program that we partner very closely with the Green Valley Fire Department on, and that's what's called SHIM. That is Safety and Health in Motion. It's a fall prevention program. Um, we began that program in 2011. We have seen uh, I think over the years, probably close to 2000 people from uh, the Green Valley area in there. Um, and I wanna hand out a little uh, a piece of data that in our area alone, uh, just in Green Valley, um, that the falls that are reported are 130 per month. So those are what's recorded and reported to the um, Green Valley Fire District. Um, take that and probably times it by four is what, what is happening. Um, there's a lot of slips, trips. We know injuries can be um, devastating and those types of things. But this particular program partners um, in RN with one of the Green Valley Fire Corps volunteers. And they go in the home not to um, criticize or critique, but to um, just kind of help that person look at their surroundings. First, environmental, um, things on the floor, rugs, um, scattered um, uh, throw rugs, um, uh, cords, um, maybe things that might need to be lowered um, that are maybe too high. We, we have a lot of people getting on, um, uh, step stools and ladders and all those things to change things that are way out of reach. Um, bringing things down a little bit environmentally is is the is the um, ground uneven. Um, is it too slick? Um, those types of things. We also look at um, social and medical. So the while the fire corps volunteer might be um, looking at someone's home in their garage. Um, the other part is looking at uh, medical and go reviewing with someone their, their medical history. You know, how often have you had your vision checked, your um, hearing checked? Um, um, you know, what, what kind of medications are you on? And I want to stop right there because a lot of people take what's called Advil PM, Tylenol PM. Well, the PM part of that is Benadryl or diphenhydramine. So when we created our, um, our SHIM program, we also uh, had help with the U of A, the Center on Aging and the nursing professors there. So our SHIM is now evidence-based because of how they added and how they upgraded this program. Program. And one of that was that medication is well known if you are 60 years of age and older, taking that Benadryl, that is carried into the next day. So you are still now groggy that next day, and then we're finding people tripping or slipping um, and not fully alert and functioning because of that um, continued on medication um, side effect. So that's just a little uh, data for that. Um, I want to just share a quick story on, on this, and I know Wes has stories on some of his other programs that he's going to be talking about too, but this kind of puts it in perspective a little bit. Um, we had a visit to an individual in Green Valley. Um, the environment was great while they were assessing the environment. It was fine, but when I walked in to talk to this individual in their kitchen, the whole uh, counter was lined up with medications. So um, sometimes we, we listen to something on the um, commercial or, or someone says, oh, wow, that, that's working for me. Maybe you should take that. So this person was listening to um, some of the commercials, but added several of these um, 
over-the-counter medications. And some of them were from um, um, more of a natural store. So they were in concentrated form of liquid. So the concentrated liquid form um, is really very strong. And uh, that person could not see the fine details and ended up taking about 13,000 milligrams of calcium because it was said one to two drops and, and then a few times a day. So those drops indicated how many milligrams. So when I was adding up all this, um, my concern and concern for a lot of people when you're taking so much high volume of medications is, you know, are your kidneys working? Are you, are, are you, is your whole system working? Um, are you able to function okay? So um, I reverted that back and, and said to that person, you, you're gonna have to, this is what I want you to say to the physician. We went over that. And um, that person caught up with me actually in a white elephant parade that we were in um, several years back and said, you know, my gosh, I have cut back. My doctor took that away. Um, it's, it's really interesting, um, that we are way over the national average of medications down here in Green Valley. The national uh, average is about three to five, uh, prescription medications. Uh, we're averaging 10 and above. So there's a lot of, um, and sometimes it's just communication that we can, um, increase that awareness to when we're, when we're looking at falls. We're also looking at that health and we're just saying, you know what, ask your doctor about this. Make sure they know, go to one pharmacy, not two. Make sure they know what you're all taking. So that's a little bit about um, a story of SHIM and how that has helped. Um, we did some data on the fall prevention the first um, year that we did it. And we gathered data because we were going to go speak at Washington, D.C. for a national conference about it. And uh, at that time, we had saved, uh, self-reported, about 150 falls um, that year, which could have equaled up to $10 million because of the fact if you fall, you have a, a transport to the ER, an ER visit, physician visits, and x-rays. So when we added all that up, that was a um, data collection partnership between Valley System Services and the Green Valley Fire District. So um, it's really incredible to stay health, stay safe, uh, stay vertical is how we kind of say it sometimes. It's just to make sure that you kind of watch where you're walking. Um, and some people even nowadays uh, hold their phone and I've caught several just, you know, watching their phone and not watching the feet. So it doesn't take much to take a trip or slip and fall. And um, those can really add up significantly in cost. So um, I'm going to turn it back over to Wes for the social programs. So we, Vass believes very much that uh, one of the important elements in everyone's life is socialization. And it's particularly difficult for a lot of seniors. Um, all of our service area as a high senior population, even Sarita. We all think Sarita is only young people, only Air Force, only all these things. It's not, it, it's a lot of retirees as well, but particularly Green Valley, of course, um, very much mostly seniors. So our, our socialization program, the formal parts of it are mainly what we call SAS groups, which is socialization and support for seniors. It's an acronym there, S-A-S-S. -S. Those are in-person peer support groups. Sometimes they have a theme. We, we uh, might have uh, a group that's receiving some health education from one of the nurses, for instance, that meets regularly and goes through that. Uh, sometimes they're not themed, they're socialization, and we have a proctor, a volunteer, who meets with them to keep the conversation going. And in a neat way, sometimes the groups come up with themes themselves. Um, before the pandemic and, and virtual was a word that we knew everybody, um, we had a group that, that sort of became virtual travelers and they couldn't travel anymore, but they were all bringing travel books 
and photographs from places they'd been in their life and sharing those trips with everybody present. So it was just a really neat way, a group of, of people who were similar in some way or didn't know that they were similar until they met, got together and they talked for a couple of hours. Uh, we provide transportation to get them uh, to the meeting place at the office if they need it. We'll talk more about the transportation later. So those are in-person. Our second in-person group, uh, and, and both of those in-persons were, were suspended uh, during most of the pandemic. They're starting back slowly now, um, but the second in-person is actually in-home visitation. And we call it the Friendly Visitor Program. Um, a client is paired with a volunteer. And we work really hard on those pairings to get people that are simpatico in their time together. Uh, and that volunteer actually meets the client up to once a week. Sometimes it's, it's twice a month. That is, is determined by the client and the friendly visitor. Uh, they meet for, for an hour, maybe two hours, talk, visit about their lives past, present, future, uh, and it's just that, a socialization program. But the third that, that I think has been truly surprising, the intensity of the impact in the community uh, is the friendly phone calling program. VAS has had that for years, a friendly phone calling program. Um, but when the pandemic began and uh, quarantines and, and lockdowns began and, and we realized socialization was really going to be an issue. Of course, we thought it was all going to be for two weeks in the beginning, if we remember back to March, 2020, but we decided to really um, intensify our phone efforts. So that month we began uh, making over a thousand phone calls from the office. We, we sort of got volunteers very quickly engaged with this. Now we have a team that uh, that's their main volunteer activity that come in every day. We have people there making friendly phone calls out to the community. It's the same group of people that get the calls every week. Um, they're, so they're not random. We, we don't make cold calls out into the community. They are people who have come to us for a service and we've shared about this program, or maybe a loved one has thought it would be good for them. And so we encourage that loved one to have the person reach out to us and we link up that way. We're making between 1,300 and 1,400 calls a month now out. Um, there are some other programs in the community that do daily check-in calls mainly for health safety. And those are wonderful programs. A lot of our clients are also in that program uh, or those programs and we support that. We love partnering that way. This is a little different. Whereas those check-in calls uh, are limited to about 30 seconds each. These can be up to 20 minutes if the person needs that time with another person on the phone. Um, we receive cards from people in this program every single week thanking us for, for these phone calls. People are saying it's the only time that they're reached out to by a person. It is by phone, but it's still one-on-one. -on -one. It's a real person on either end of the phone. Um, people to talk to our friendly phone callers often about the loneliness that, that they are experiencing some people who have been well and able to be out until the pandemic, but still are not feeling safe getting out in public. They've continued to receive these calls faithfully through the pandemic, <clears throat> letting them know that they're not alone. The other really neat part about the program is that we at VAS have become aware of much more need with our existing clients, reaching out to them first, and then they will share with our friendly phone caller a need. Um, these needs have ranged from everything from um, the light bulb is out in my bathroom. Recently, a lady in her 90s shared that with, with one of our callers. 
that goes hand in hand with the program Chris just talked about. We do not want someone uh, in her situation on a step ladder changing the light. Thankfully, she realized that, uh, but she didn't know who to ask. So um, we, we took care of that. We sent a volunteer handyman out and got her light bulb changed. Uh, it's, it's gone all the way up to somebody just said they didn't feel well. So one of our RNs followed up and said, you really should check in with your provider about this. You, and learned that there was a pretty serious health situation going on with their medication, actually, which again goes back to, to something Chris was just talking back about. Um, we've had people say they couldn't afford their pet food and didn't know what they were going to do about that. Um, we have a resource. We can link them with the Animal League and, and help that situation. So it's really, you sit there and we read these report sheets from the friendly phone callers or they, they tell us a need someone had and you think, I wonder if these people would have reached out with that need if we hadn't called them first. So it's become a very engaging part of the way that VAS interacts with our clients that are already established. Some of these clients have been cl um, clients of VAS for 20 years almost. Chris and I were talking about yesterday some clients that, um, that predate her and, and that's since 2010. So we we like to to keep this going on with with clients and following through their changes in their life and seeing what new ways that we can engage as an agency with them um uh, in 2010 uh with the development of uh shim the fall prevention program we have slowly developed more community health. Um, like I said before, we have uh, RNs in pretty much every program we do because we're kind of looking at everything holistically um, and making sure that if, if we're looking and helping someone, we're helping them with all their um, concerns and needs, not just, not just one. So um, we have several. Um, our our RNs do RN advocacy. So we don't do hands-on except um, uh, blood pressures and vitals and stuff like that, but we do more of education and advocacy and support. So um, one of those programs is um, going home with care. Um, that is when we can see someone right after the discharge of a hospitalization. And we might be that bridge between um, home health care that might be skilled, which might be physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, going into the home um, so we can bridge that gap so one of our RNs can come in and look at those um, medications, making sure that they know what they're taking, making sure that they have the new medication, uh, making sure they know maybe if their diet has changed or activity has changed. Uh, maybe it's a new walker or a new cane, some instructions with that. So we kind of bridge that gap when someone is discharged. Often there's um, someone you're not going home to and you're trying to do it on your own and understanding a pile of discharge um, orders is difficult for anybody. So um, just having that support um, after discharge. So that's, that is one of ours. Um, we do work with the local hospitals um, and we also get referrals from everywhere. So um, uh, I'll just kind of veer off for just one minute on that. So, um, and I know we talked a little bit um, about, you know, does someone call in? They can call in. Uh, a friend can call in. A family member can call in. An adult uh, child can call in. Um, neighbors call in. Doctors call in. Um, pastors call in. So we just make sure that we have permission to talk to that person if it's not that person calling in. Um, so we have referrals coming in from all different sources. Um, just kind of a sidetrack on that. Um, another program that we have with the with the RNs um, and health wise is what's called a touch that cares. Um, this is the only program that we do have uh, that is a charge and it's kind of a sliding scale uh, charge. Um, and it just um, because of the fact we go uh, into the home or in the RN from our office goes into the home and will fill the med boxes or 
uh, look at the medications and set them up so they're set up for them to take um, each day. And so that um, uh, cost kind of covers the extra liability that we have to have for that particular program. But that program also um, allows an RN to go with someone on a visit, um, more communication with the family member or doctor. Um, but it is usually maybe a, a weekly visit or uh, every other week visit. So uh, depending on when they need uh, medications, looked at, set up, picked up, whatever, um, that is how that program kind of works. It's kind of more of, if you call it a more of a, a comprehensive care management program. Uh, a third program for the RNs that we have in our, our health is what we call um, a wraparound services. So we do a lot already with the Green Valley Fire District. Um, and we do a lot of wraparound services uh, as, as well with them. So if they have, if they're seeing someone in, in a, an emergency type situation and they have other issues that are not um, what they're directly um, looking at and something might come up, um, that is kind of a wraparound service. So we have had anything from a diet change to um, a new medication or something that they might be able not to pick up medication from the pharmacy, or they just have questions about a chronic illness, a new disease, that type of stuff. So we kind of do a wraparound with the fire district as well. Again, a kind of a holistic look. If they have um, questions that the fire district thinks that uh, might qualify for what we do, then we do get referrals from uh, the Green Valley Fire District. We have a great referral um, data system that we have set up between us. Um, and I think it works very efficiently and we, we tr just try to care for the whole community, you know, as a whole. So the last uh, health program I want to talk about, and it's kind of a um, one that is is quite devastating to a lot is uh, memory loss. So what we have is called uh, Neighbors AIM. It's awareness and memory loss. We have um, support groups, we have education, and then we have what's called virtual dementia tour. Um, it's a um, kind of a, an exercise program, not particular exercise, but a way that you can kind of walk in the shoes of someone with dementia. So it's, it's a trademark program, so we have to follow the guidelines of it. But um, um, to have someone who might care for, whether that be any type of, of a family member or spouse or, or friend that might be caring for someone with dementia and understanding a little more of what they're going through, um, um, some of my background is in uh, neuro and trauma and, and the, the devastation I have seen with families with, with dementia and memory loss and what they're going through and the, how they want to try to relate, but sometimes they're, they're not quite sure. Um, this particular um, tour program um, is kind of a, um, a, a great way of learning a little bit more understanding a little bit more when when you're talking to someone with with memory loss or dementia and you're asking them a whole full-on sentence um they're back at, at, at word number two so um we put on all kinds of accoutrements we have them do several tasks in this program and then we kind of um, debrief after that. And so with that debrief after this program, we go into a lot of the resources in the area and where there is support. Um, we have seen several hundred take this program and, and do the particular program, a virtual dementia tour. Um, we've had one that was a 16 year old grandson that wanted to know more because he spent afternoons with grand grandpa, or we had, you know, spouses, and we've had um, some of the sheriff um, uh, that came in to do this, as well as um, a couple of the assisted livings, um, their, their staff. So it's, it's really um, understanding and trying to um, just go on that level to see um, a lot of us 
don't understand, you know, we want to have this full on conversation sometimes and it's very difficult um, because sometimes it's, it's, it comes in bits and pieces to that person. So um, those are kind of all of the RN programs or the health programs, the community health programs that we have. Um, and they're certainly open to a lot of the residents and all that we see. Um, so I just wanted to explain a little bit about those. And I want to say, um, going forward, we have a couple of exciting partnerships coming up. Uh, one with a particular health program we're still working on. But that uh, exciting partnership is with the Sarita Food Bank that's coming up um, in the future. We're, we're looking and planning on, on certain uh, things that we can do, not only health education, but demonstration wise, um, because there's a need in the area for that particular uh, subject. So um, that will be coming up shortly and um, we'll announce that to you and when we know further and when, when we can start that. Um, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Wes um, for transportation and another affiliate uh, partnership, what we have was with the Diaper Bank of Southern Arizona. So starting the, the Diaper Bank, it, it was last summer, early last summer, we became the, the only affiliate in our area, in Southern Pima County, Northern Santa Cruz County, of the Diaper Bank of Southern Arizona, which interestingly was the very first diaper bank in the United States, was in Tucson. So uh, kind of interesting for our area. It provides diapers for children of all ages, youth, adults, feminine hygiene products, wipes uh, for diaper changes, as well as materials for, for on the bed uh, for, for people who suffer from incontinence. Uh, it, it's been an amazing program. It, it very quickly ramped up into something that uh, I don't think we had any idea exactly how severe the need was until we had the products available for our area. Uh, it, those items are not covered by food stamps, SNAP, like we talked about earlier. So someone who, who is needing uh, those sometimes they are absolutely unable to get them. They, they cannot. They're very expensive uh, to fundraise for and have. Uh, so, so becoming an affiliate with, with the organization in Tucson has helped us immensely to help people in our area. Each client can receive 50 of each items per month. Uh, obviously, that may not cover all of their need, but it covers a lot and it helps them in that way. Um, we, we have found it is an excellent bridge to get families and single people into the agency so that we can assess where they are and other ways we can help. It's become very common for somebody who's falling short with their budget for the month and they need diapers to have heard about us, particularly from their friends in their neighborhoods. They come to us for diapers and then we learn they could qualify for SNAP. They could qualify for access. Maybe their children don't have medical care, maybe our medical coverage. So it, it's become a really great way for us to, to, again, reach out into the community and find other ways to help people, uh, to give them uh, that helping hand forward moving on. Volunteers um, are really we could not do what, what we do without volunteers. Every single one of our programs has a volunteer element to it. The friendly phone call program, it is volunteers week after week making those phone calls. We have volunteers who help us at the front desk. They're the first voice or the first smile that somebody sees at Valley Assistance Services or those volunteers. Uh, we have people who help in the office with data entry. Maybe they're very good at uh, Excel. A lot of our records are in Excel. We have people who enjoy repetitive work. Uh, one gentleman 
he he says to me he likes to daydream so one of his favorite things is to come in and shred documents so i all those sorts of things uh we can find something that anyone wants to do if you want to give back we can help you plug in and 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 find somewhere we have retired registered nurses who are working with the fall prevention program um, we have a retired counselor who enjoys talking with people and he's very active in the socialization program. We have retired contractors who do light handyman repairs and, and changing light bulbs because he feels comfortable on a ladder. He knows how to do that safely. So uh, we'd love to visit with anyone who wants to give back. Uh, drivers are very important. We have the senior transportation program that is completely free to participants. So we provide transportation from people's homes to medical appointments, banking appointments, sometimes appointments with their lawyers, also social events, uh, groceries. We, we try to get people where they need to go, certainly locally in our service area and also to Tucson or Nogales for medical appointments. Um, mileage is reimbursed for the drivers. So that, that's another thing that can kind of help. I, I know gas is very expensive right now. Uh, we, we do reimburse the mileage of drivers in that program at the federal rate of mileage reimbursement. But the, the other really important part of that transportation program, it's not just that we take people where that we, they need to go, or it's not just that we have someone going to the grocery store, picking up groceries and delivering to somebody who can't leave their home, or going to the food bank and picking up food boxes and delivering it out to people. It's not only those things, those are very essential. It is a very social program. When you're in the car with somebody, you're talking. And we hear that all the time from drivers and from the clients that uh, it's one of the things they love about the program is that they get an opportunity to be with somebody. And, and it's our natural uh, proclivity is to talk in a car back and forth. So, and then again, using that holistic approach, that's another way that we learn about the needs of people. Sometimes someone in the car will say, um, I don't really have enough money this month is, is that one's happened or um, maybe a driver might notice someone's not getting around as well as they were. And so they ask about that and, and the client says, I fell last week. That's another recent example that happened. So then we have uh, a registered nurse reach out and just say, how are you? What can we do? Maybe link them with the fall program shim that Chris talked about. So every one of our programs feeds into another, and that's a vital task of our volunteers. It doesn't matter what program you might volunteer in. We really ask you and, and, and train with our volunteers to look at the whole situation when you're meeting with someone. Um, it is a friendly phone call you're making, but what did you hear from that person? Do we need to reach back out? Do, we, do they need to speak with a nurse? Do they? Our volunteers are vital to VAS getting our programs out into the community. And that's a really neat thing and opportunity for volunteers to, realizing that, or to realize that they are really uh, the eyes and ears often of VAS. We have hundreds of active clients at any given time. And we in the office don't see those clients often. Our volunteers do. Those are the touches of VAS with those clients. We have a good time with volunteers. Uh, we, we try to foster a community within the volunteers as well. We have some luncheons when we bring different groups in so they can get to know each other and share. Um, we're always available for support for our volunteers by phone, by email. The, it requires a background check to volunteer because we do come into contact with clients or we might come into contact with their private information if you're working in the office. So uh, it's a felony misdemeanor and, and driving um, 
background check in all 50 states. We take care of that for you. Uh, it's an easy application. And then we just visit about what do you do? And I would encourage you to, if so often we have volunteers who come in and they're not quite sure how they can help. Maybe they're not outgoing, so um, they don't want to be on the phone with people or they don't want to meet with clients. We have some people that, that they're just more reserved and they don't really want to be face to face with clients. Just come in and visit with us and, and we'll talk about maybe what was your career, or what interests you, what would you like to do? We can find a way for you to help if you would like to help the community in that way. <clears throat> Chris. Um, there's a couple other things that, um, and I'll lead back into one more that Wes can talk about that he's, he's helping. Um, a couple of things that we have done, one program we have done for quite some time in partnership with um, the, the Green Valley Food Bank is a holiday program. And with the holiday program, we have um, people uh, give, um, oh, I would say toiletries, different um, notebooks, um, word searches, that type of thing that we can go into a gift bag with. And then we partner with the Green Valley Food Bank for a food basket. <laughs> And so we deliver about 100 to 120 each Christmas time uh, with the help of the Green Valley Fire Corps and our volunteers that go out and deliver those uh, to those that might need it, might be alone during that time, might not be able to afford um, little gifts or, or a lot of toiletries um, that might not be included on the SNAP application and, and reimbursement that Wes was talking about. We have done that for quite some time. It, it's been uh, at least, I think, about 20 years that the holiday program has been going on with uh, Valley Assistance Services. So that is one of the partnerships uh, with the Green Valley Food Bank that we really thank them for. Um, we will be starting soon. A uh, We started a little pilot program of a backpack program down for youth in Santa Cruz area. Um, and that is um, a little bit of uh, school supplies, a little bit of uh, breakfast uh, food for the weekends. And then we also partner with one of our benefit advocates to uh, make sure they have a, a uh, the benefits that they have and they can apply for more. Um, so I'm going to turn it over real quickly to Wes um, to talk about, he has one that he actually does with Common Middle School. So this was uh, a wonderful program and I know our time is, is sort of running out. I'll keep it brief, but uh, this, the Albertson Safeway Foundation, which in our areas is the Safeway Stores, um, Offer a, gave us a grant and we were able to actually reach out to the Continental School District there in Green Valley and uh, for students who were on free or reduced lunches, we were able to bring them in and give a gift card for Safeway for groceries for every child in the house that was under 18 in order that we were able to, to make contact with that family to do a complete benefits checkup for them. So we, uh, it was sort of the icebreaker. That was the idea that the gift card would allow us to make contact. We visited with the counselors at the school. They, they helped us make contact with families. And then the families would come in and we would do the benefits checkup, do a pre-screening, use tools uh, that we have available to us to see if someone might be eligible for these programs. And uh, it was very eye-opening. You, you might think, sometimes even we thought that most people had most of the benefits they could get. We, we certainly see our financial assistance clients coming in that, that need some help getting them. But we thought maybe most people we aren't seeing in our office already have what they could get to help them. We learned pretty quickly that's not always the case. Um, we met 
with uh, the first 15 families, when we totaled up every resource that they were able to get, it was over eight SNAP applications. There was a ninth, but, but actually they elected not to finish. So eight food stamp applications. That was families that could get that benefit that didn't have it. Um, access for children that, that could have medical coverage and didn't, and parents. Um, we had families that didn't know that there was anyone in the area that could help them navigate through these, these programs, getting them. That was very common. Uh, we had Spanish speaking parents who didn't really feel that they could get their foot through the door to figure out the process of what to do next. And we do have full-time bilingual staff at uh, Valley Assistance. So any of our programs can be uh, given to someone who's Spanish speaking only. So it, it was really an amazing eye opener that there are so many people out there who, who have these opportunities to, to have this help and they don't know. They just, they don't think that they would qualify or maybe they have been too embarrassed to ask. We see that a lot too. Um, so it was a great program and it was another way for us to reach out into the community, meet a group of people that we probably wouldn't have had our foot in the door with right away. And then the amazing thing about that group was that word spread fast in their neighborhoods. It was moms talking to moms, dads talking to dads, kids uh, going to other kids' events, and then parents would talk. And it was a way for us to really get, get in with another community of people. And we're very thankful to the Safeway and Albertsons Foundation to have had that opportunity as well. They, they have been good supporters of Bass. Uh, just a couple more um, things that people might not know about, um, and and we do have our one office that is in the Springs HOA that is across from the GVR there. Um, that is our main office. We do have a satellite office in Tubac as well, because we do have um, that is part of our service area, and um, some of the programs will be. Um, um, more developed and extending in the future that way. And then we are looking also at a Sarita office, a satellite office as well. Um, but I wanna thank, uh, uh, one thing is uh, we wrote a grant to Freeport, so I wanna thank them. Um, we are renovating our office. Um, we have, um, we're kind of doubled up right now. And so the, our office was given to us by Dorn, Dorn Homes. Um, and so that was a, just a, just a wonderful humongous gift uh, to give um, but some of our offices were, were on a patio so we're doing that so if you ever come and visit us and it looks kind of um, like we're under construction we will be under construction in a couple months um, and that will be to really make everything really private confidential um, really um, more technology kind of um, upgrading what we have now to meet the needs of what we're seeing and um, I know we, we, people might say, well, how do you um, keep going on? Well, we do a lot of grants. Wes and I are the grant writers. We write a lot of grants and, and we run on grants and donations. So that, um, I just wanna kind of get that out too because that might be one of the questions. Okay, um, well, you guys, you covered a lot of ground. I don't know if people are aware of the tremendous need in Green Valley, where people perhaps are having a difficult time with housing, uh, maybe homelessness that maybe we not we're not aware of. How much of that is? Uh, can you make a give us a short answer on on that or no? Just on just on the, the, diff, the extreme difficulty we're not aware of in this community. And, you know, we do get that. And uh, a lot of people will say, well, what do you mean? And, you know, it's it's different because behind a closed door. You just don't know on the surface might be OK. But when we go to visit someone, it's it might be something quite different. 
Uh, and interestingly enough, Wes and I were looking up some data for some of the grants coming up. And you know, rent is skyrocketing. You, you see it in the news, it's going across a nation, now in Tucson um, uh, and down here. So rents have gone up about $300 a month, which they're probably gonna go up more. Um, it's about 50% more uh, in rent uh, that we're seeing. Um, and there's very few places to rent from. Um, that usually um, we do have only one that might be available for seniors on a sliding scale basis. And the wait is two years on that one here in our area. It's, it's, it's devastating. Um, people are selling their homes or selling out. If someone has a renter, they're selling them and then they have nowhere to go. So we're seeing that. Um, do you wanna add anything to that, Wes? No, just that one of the realities of Green Valley that you're, you're talking about things we might not know, Paul, is someone can be, say, social security income only, and they can make it if they have low rent, and they have for years, and they've rented the same home for years. And Chris just talked about the landlord selling the homes because of the great rise in real estate values. They live paycheck to paycheck, those renters. They have no resources to even pay first month's last month's rent somewhere if they can find a place they can afford, which is difficult. So that's what we're seeing over and over again is people have made it barely for years. And now with the, the rise in cost of everything, including rent, it's impossible financially. Wow. Okay. We have a well, question from Jennifer. Yeah, Je Jennifer, go ahead. Um, I love this whole thing. I want a phone number where I can reach you because I want to meet with you and, and do some volunteer work. Uh, maybe I came on too late and didn't get the phone number if you gave it before. Could you give me a phone number, please? Okay. Uh, it's 520-625-5966, and I will put it in chat. 520-625-5966. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, let me also say, Jennifer, there will be yeah. flyers uh, about this organization in the Democrat Club. Okay. That we can hand out that gives information about them. Okay. I love this whole thing. I think it's such a necessary thing. They're and amazing. all of us, as we get older, and some of you who have spouses and lose a spouse, we could find ourselves in this kind of situation fairly easily. Exactly. Exactly. So, okay, exactly. thanks. Wonderful stuff you're doing, fantastic. I think one of the biggest problems that happens in our community is just loneliness. And what you're doing with a lot of your work is, is addressing that. And that, that's just wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, I'm running for this, uh, this uh, Continental School Board. Uh, so I, I was particularly interested in what you were talking about with that program. And, and that's just wonderful. I'd love to talk to you and learn more about it. And my thought was, would it be possible to replicate this? Uh, but in any case, thank you for the great work you're doing. Thank you. So uh, and in the chat, I included an email address. I accidentally put a typo in the first time. So use the second one. Info at valleyassistantservices.org. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So to describe where you guys are, it's near the Springs GVR Center. Sir, the road next to uh, I-19 on the east, as you're going down, that was it the second tower or the first tower near the hospital, right? I, it's the first tower north of the hospital. North of the hospital, Fuerte is the road. You turn in, you veer a little bit to the right, go past the, uh, the GVR center and you're in a large building just past there across from that parking lot. And that's where you are. And uh, people can call you. And the question I was going to ask is how can we volunteer? And you need volunteers for all kinds of things. And you covered that very, very well. And so they, they have to call you or we can make it known to everybody in our, in our club how to contact you. How's that? If we send out a kind Perfect. of massive email information 
uh, to you, two people. That'd be okay. good. All right, who, ha who else has a question? Raise your hand or oh, there's gotta be questions. Okay. Mike, you had another one? Yeah, if I can double dip. Go ahead. Um, one of the things that I'm talking about with, with some of the church leaders is to see what we can do to help caregivers. You know, as we all know, as we get older, <laughs> our health fails and one or both parties ends up being a caregiver. So the idea is, can we do anything to support them uh, spiritually, financially, in, in whatever way? And I, I was wondering, are, are you doing anything in that regard? Caregiver support and assistance? We have done that in the past. Um, and we can do that. Um, what we have done in the past was a group support. And so we had about a six week session with a large group. Um, one thing that we see quite often is what's called caregiver burnout. Yeah. And you don't want to get to the point of that. We want to prevent that. That gets kind of um, very difficult to handle at that point. So the more education we can get out, um, we can form a group. So if we have enough people that will sign up, we can form a group for that. Oh, here's a, uh, a, a chat from Anita. Can we get a number for caregiver? I think it says respite help. I'm not, is, is, that, is that what you want to say, Anita? Caregiver respite help? Respite. Okay. R E S P I T E. Did I spell that wrong? I don't. What did you want to say? Chris, you know what I mean when when the caregiver needs to get away for a while and have somebody stay with their person. Okay. So, so we have a list of different um, agencies that can do that. And then we also have in the area, which is the Adult Day Health at La Posada. So there's a, a lot of resources. Um, I think we can send that maybe on to maybe Paul and then maybe you can distribute Paul, whatever that, whatever you prefer there. Okay, good. Sure. Good. Yep. So anybody else have a question? If you can't think of a question today, uh, call the Democrat club, call George, call, call myself whatever, and we can pass information on to Valley Assistance. Uh, it's just a, it's an incredible, incredible group. I, I'm very impressed about the wide ranging area that you guys cover all the way to Aravaca, right? You know, are you, do you go to Tucson or you go to the edge of Tucson? Our transportation service does go into Tucson for medical mm -hmm. appointments. Uh, our service area does not. Oh. There, there are other, but we, we do get calls from people in Tucson. We link them with, with agencies that, that will serve them uh, with that service area. Okay, good. Uh, I, I, I found it very interesting that you provide the socialization service to people who are lonely. I don't think we think about that. We don't realize that, that people just need a contact, right? It's huge. And how much of that do you see, uh, let's say a week? How, what, how many incidents of that do you see? Well, phone call wise, I, I mean, again, it'd be 400 and something a week, a week. that we make going out. Yep. Um, new clients. Virtually anyone who's homebound or has limited mobility, uh, anything like that, uh, there, there's a large degree of loneliness. And even people who can get out and do their shopping and such, it doesn't mean that they're having a lot of meaningful connection. Sometimes a lot of their friends have died or moved. Their family lives away. So. Right. Do you do any uh, uh, where, <clears throat> where people can go out and do shopping for someone and bring back what they need? Yes, so not only do we do people transportation, we do errand transportation. So oh, we have a whole other team that just goes and does errands too as well. Wow, wow. And how many volunteers do you have? Could you give us a ballpark figure? Mm, I'm gonna say, Wes, probably about 150 to 170 roughly. Um, yes. Not all active at the same time, but you know, um, you know, uh, we do have, uh, 
a lot of drivers, but we also need a lot of drivers. That was one of the programs that really went up during COVID and has stayed up. About when I started with Valley Assistant Services, we had about 30 people in the transportation program. It is over 300. Wow. So it has really risen mm -hmm. quite severely. And it just shows the need of uh, people want that connection when they go shopping or when they go to a doctor. Um, that's just that's just the way we are. So uh, if we can provide that, all the better. Uh, let me just say, in case anyone was wondering, there is not a strict time commitment. We have people who want to come in and serve six hours a week. We have people who only want to be there every other week because maybe they have a lot going on in their life. We will work with your schedule. We have other people who say, just let me know when you need something and we'll see if we can do it. You bet. We'll do that mm -hmm. too. We have seasonal people. Uh, so we communicate about that and we just suspend those volunteers during the months they're gone. So they're not getting a lot of emails. Then when they come back to town, they let us know and we reactivate. So we will work with those sorts of situations. Okay, good. Another chat here. Can we get you guys permission to add your link to our newsletter? We have a newsletter coming out on the 7th of March. Every month we have a newsletter for, to, for our members. So we can do that. We can sure. Add a link so that sure. we can contact you. Okay, good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from anybody? I just want to say I think this has been a wonderful Saturday program. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just touched me or all of us here, but it certainly has touched me. So thank you. You both were a wealth of information. Thank you. Well, thank you. You, you guys are fantastic. So uh, unless there's anything else, I'll just say that the next uh, program we have will feature Stanley Feldman, an 88 year old practicing attorney who was on the Arizona Supreme Court on the 12th at 1.30 and at three o'clock on the 19th, Randy Meyer, of the Good Shepherd Church is going to be telling us about the border situation and the way they assist people. So unless there's anything else, we are done. And thank you guys very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll get in touch oh, with you. Thank you. Yay. We'll get in touch with you. Okay.